Good morning and afternoon, everyone, today on today's episode of Peach Owl's Garage. We're going to swap out a Mark II fuel tank with a Mark III fuel tank, if you see that up there. So we're going to get to work, because this is Peach Owl's Garage. Next time... See, I have a total mess inside this Mark II, but it's okay. It's going to be all gone pretty soon. Uh, so first things first, get into the trunk and find your fuel cap or fuel cover. And this is what you're going to get to right here. And then you're going to need to pull the little pin here, this three wire pin, out. It actually, there's nothing, nothing special, it just pull it out and it pops right out. Um, I'm going to just cut these fuel lines, same with this one, it's going to be cut, uh, and then we're going to drop the fuel tank, we're going to follow this one, this one goes down to the, uh, I believe this goes to the secondary fuel pump underneath the car, so we're going to get to that in just a moment. Uh, to take this cover off, it's just three Phillips screws, pretty, pretty simple. Once you get that done, you're going to work your way down. Uh, da -da -da. This way, this is the fuel tank here. Um, on the fuel tank, you're gonna see one, two, and work your way down this way, and then you'll see number three, four, and number five bolts. Those are the five you're gonna need to drop the tank. These straps hold everything down. Um, so there's that, and then that wire we were tugging on, which is this guy right here, we're going to need to unplug this one and get that out of the way, because we don't want that to get damaged. This is the secondary fuel pump on this system, um, so we're not going to be using this anymore, so I'm going to get rid of this. This is the reason why we're going to go to a Mark III fuel tank because you don't have to have two fuel pumps, you just need one pump and it'll work. You save yourself some money and time and stuff. Uh, for this whole assembly to come off as one piece, there's one, two, uh, three, four bolts that I can see so far. I hold this all as one. Um, you're going to need to cut this fuel line, since we're no longer going to be needing this one. This is a, feed, this is a supply uh, fuel line. Um, we're going to have to figure out how to run this line all the way to the fuel tank, because that's what goes that way. Um, and then once you get that, figure out that supply line, you got to figure out the feed line, the, the return one, which more than likely is this guy right here is probably the return line. Um, this is the third one, which I don't know where that belongs to. But these are all going to end up being cut. And then we're going to have to find replacement ones and go all the way to the back to the fuel tank. This way. Uh, so, first thing I would recommend is getting rid of this guy here. Making sure you unplug your wire. Uh, unbolt this. Cut your lines. I know it's like the worst thing to do, but you're going to have to cut your fuel lines. It's going to smell, but just believe me, you're going to have to do it. <sighs> Unless you're going to leave it here. It's up to you guys. Alright, let's get to work. Alright, back to where we were, where we left off. So get yourself a 13 socket. And get this guy taken off. Now, we're not going to be reusing this any of this so we don't have to worry about it one thing you will notice uh, notice that um, in doing this process you do lose your fuel filter which is this guy right here so we're gonna have to figure out how to add a new fuel filter to this whole system not gonna be hard uh, since you can buy inline uh, fuel filters that are about this size, so you don't have to worry about replacing them for about 10,000 miles or uh, or depending on how often you guys like to replace them. I like to replace mine uh, twice a year. Uh, 
uh, that way you never have to worry about injectors getting clogged. Depending where you guys buy gas, the cheaper the gas, the crappier your fuel is going to be, so it's going to get dirty. So definitely recommend fuel filters being replaced very often. kind of get out of the way because I don't know how heavy this is I want to not try to damage it because I'm going to probably want to sell it someone's going to want this best I can not to damage any of this so now that I'm removing it I can actually pay attention to what's holding it up so so far it's one two lines right here okay so what we're gonna do is bring some of your rags if you brought some and put them underneath here because you're probably gonna get yourself showered with freaking fuel Bring yourself a box cutter with a brand new blade. I'm cutting this line first. And yeah, there's fuel in it. There's that one. Remember, I'm not trying to save this, so for all you guys trying to preserve your system, this is not what you're supposed to do. <laughs> there we go. Instead of fuel, I got a bunch of dirt. Oh, there's another line right here. So there's three lines in total that you have to cut. And I don't mind cutting these because, like I said, I'm running all new lines underneath. And yes, you will get a DIY for all of that. That way you guys can follow my build. Alright, so that was actually really, really simple. I thought it was going to be a lot more involved than that. I'm impressed. So these wires right here are not part of your car. You're not going to have the same wires as me, so don't freak out. Someone ran a wiring here for a, a hitch, so I have to pull all this out as well. Um, so this is going to be gone. No more. We're not going to need this anymore. I might use these two bolts right here to maybe make a little bracket here to mount a fuel filter uh, to run uh, when we get that going. So that's done. Now we're going to get the fuel tank pulled out. So take your gas cap off right here and then this is rubber grommet that sits around here uh, around the gas tank itself. You're going to push it down. It looks like it splits. has like a ring. So you're going to push it down and work your way around. Just like that. Uh, underneath over here on this side, I don't see anything that would... Uh, oh, yeah, there is actually. There's a bolt right there. And I think that's it. That's holding the whole tank in place. So, well, there plus the five that are underneath. So let's get that removed. And then go so to the next there. part of your DIY or this DIY will be putting a jack and a piece of wood underneath the tank um, the reason why because it's going to drop and you want to support it so you don't hurt yourself um, so now get removing all the five bolts that we showed you when I get those removed I'll show you what to do next okay guys alright so now that you guys got all the straps removed uh, all the five bolts that you had Make sure you keep all the old hardware, all this stuff, uh, don't lose that. You can reuse the hardware and then during the install. Um, you just can't use the straps. The straps are only for Mark II tanks, 
not for Mark III. So you got to make sure when you get your Mark III tank, you have to get the straps from the Mark III as well. That's what I've been told. We'll find out soon. So now that everything's been removed, we're going to drop this guy down slowly and see where this takes us. So just so you guys know, this gas tank has a lot of gas in it still. So. If all is correct, it should be pretty easy to drop. Okay, so there is a fuel line uh, that's still being caught. Um, those are the ones I didn't cut. I forgot to tell you guys I didn't cut those yet. Uh, so get your box cutter again. You gotta drop this even more. I mean, it won't damage anything since you're already gonna damage them by cutting them. So it's not a big deal. Watch out for the Black Widows if there's any. Don't want to deal with that. Uh, right here. You got one fuel line. These are the ones I told you you should have cut before we dropped the fuel tank. See if we can get this out of the way. Okay, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Okay. Actually not too bad. That's uh, the removal of the tank itself. So just remember that one screw on top and then the five on the bottom and the couple wires and the fuel lines that we have to cut and the couple wires and it just drops straight down to the ground. That's pretty cool. I'm pretty satisfied with that. Um, and just kind of fendangle it through the right there through the brake. And just slide it out from underneath it. Not too shabby. So there you have it. That's the Mark II fuel tank. Uh, you can see that there's a lot to it, so we're going to have to figure out what's involved here. Looks like a breather. There's a ground wire somewhere on here. So yeah, we're going to have to grab the Mark III one and then we're going to do a quick comparison and see what's the biggest difference besides the fuel the fuel pump that you have to use with it and that's pretty much it all right so here are the fuel tanks and so so you guys can see the differences mark two on the left mark three on the right they are essentially identical fuel tanks besides one thing you'll notice the size of the fuel pump uh, holder uh, the mark two fuel tank pumps are very very small they're low flow pumps so they can just pump right into the uh, secondary pump which is the higher pressure pump and then goes into the engine on a mark three they eliminated the secondary pump and went to just one huge high flow pump uh, depending on the engine you had they had different types of pumps um, but essentially same exact setup however more efficient less stuff to worry about uh, one thing that you guys have to get when you guys get the mark three um, fuel tank you need the pigtails 
off of the Mark III because if not, you'll never be able to power the fuel pump. Uh, I got them off the car. I'll show you guys in just a second here. But that was pretty easy. I'm actually pretty happy on how easy that DI uh, well, process went for me. Um, these are the Mark III fuel tank straps. <coughs> and these are the pigtails <coughs> that you're going to need for the fuel pump. Now, how we're going to wire them, we're not going to get to that point until we actually get to that point. So I won't show you guys that yet. Uh, but we're just doing the swap right now until I, until I actually get a fuel pump and then start testing. I can't do anything about it until then. Um, but that's pretty much the, re the removal of the pump. Now we're going to get to the next part of the process, which will be um, cleaning up the tank. Uh, there's a chemical you can buy from a local auto parts store that cleans the inside of the fuel tank, which is what you're going to want to do so you can maximize the... You're pretty much getting your fuel tank clean because I don't know where this tank came from when my buddy got it. I think he got it from the junkyard. Um, so it's going to be full of junk, crud, and it's going to be dirty. So you don't want to clog up your fuel filter. You don't want to clog up your fuel injectors when you pop in the tank. So you want to do some cleaning. So we'll get you guys uh, the list of chemicals you're going to need to clean your fuel tank because uh, I'm going to have to buy a fuel pump pretty soon. But that is it for right now for that part of the DIY that's just a removal and a comparison I will show you guys later how to install the tank it's just as easy and you just saw how saw you just saw how easy it was for me to remove it it's the same process reversed but you don't want to do that until you have your fuel lines number one your pigtails and the uh, fuel filter that you're gonna run so you can have a legit fuel system going to your engine alright guys and we're gonna have to order all that stuff soon so you guys can see that later. Peace out, and thanks again for watching this episode of Pinchy Al's Garage. Because the Mark II, I'm not going to reveal it until we're done, is going to be ready for a paint job pretty soon. Uh, once the paint job is done, we're going to finish up mocking up the intercooler and the radiator system, and then the wiring, and then we're going to fire her up. Alright guys, peace out.